Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg and I am here today for a book haul revisit. If you are unfamiliar, this is where I look back at book hauls from this month in previous years. There are going to be three different Aprils that I'm going to look back at. 2021, 2020, and 2019. I am going to put links to all three of those original book hauls in the description box down below. If you would like information about what these books that I'm about to talk about are about, I would recommend you check out those videos because here I'm really only going to focus on whether or not I have gotten around to reading these books yet. If I still want to read these books and if they will still continue to take up space on my bookshelves, which are in that direction, which is why I'm pointing over there, and how many of these I may have unhauled already. It's my way of keeping myself accountable for the books that I bring into my library. It's I, I like to think that it is helping me be a more conscious spender for books, which is obviously something that I am very passionate about since I have a channel devoted to it. But as someone who doesn't have the money to just buy every little book, I am trying to learn to be a more intentional book purchaser. And I think that's been working, but we'll see. Let's start with the most recent book haul and go back in time to the oldest. The most recent one was April 2021. Again, I'm going to put a link to the original video down below if you would like more information about that. And there were eight books that I hauled in April of 2021. It's a bit of a weird month for a book haul because four of them were actually gifted by Sean the Book Maniac who sent them to me because he was going to unhaul them. It actually was a small haul in terms of anything that I spent money on, but there are eight books because he sent me some. Now let's dive into it. The first one is something that I had purchased for myself, something I was really excited to get around to reading, and I did get around to reading it. It's Edinburgh by Alexander Chee, and I hated it. I really disliked this book, and I don't really want to go into a whole lot of why, because I'm trying not to spend a whole lot of time on each book, but I really dislike this book. I actually did throw it across the room when I was done, because the ending of this book I thought was pretty abhorrent. Really startled Joel and the dogs, because it was like a Saturday morning, we were all sitting around, and I just kind of launched it across the room. Did not like this book at all. So I'm getting rid of it. The problem is I'm transitioning away from the used bookstore in my town, because I've heard unpalatable things about the owners of that store. So I have been holding on to it until I get like a big pile of books that I can unhaul and then I'm going to trade them in at a different store. And uh, that's something that's kind of in progress, which is why even though I read this back in June, I am still in possession of it. And it's gonna be working its way out soon. The next one is one of the books that Sean the Book Maniac sent me. It is Helen Garner Stories, The Collected Short Fiction. I would like to get to this. I believe she is Australian, and it would be a perfect candidate for Aussie April. Yeah, she is Australian, so it would be perfect, but unfortunately my plate is kind of full right now, so I'm not going to be getting around to it soon, but I am very interested in getting to her short stories at some point in the future, so I will be holding on to this maybe next Aussie April. I don't know that I'm going to get an Australian book in this year for Aussie April, so maybe next year I'll try to put a little bit more of a focus on it, and if I haven't gotten to it by then, I will. The next one is Liberty by Caitlin Greenedge. I was really excited about this one. It was one of my most anticipated books from last year, and I got it when it was released, but never got around to reading it. I would still like to read it. I've heard good things about it, and for that reason, I am very comfortable letting this continue to take up space on my shelf with Helen Garner's stories. I believe they are even on the same shelf on my shelves, so... For whatever that's worth, fun little fact for you. The next one is Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu, which I don't have because I unhauled it. I actually ended up listening to it on audio, but I had gotten myself a physical copy of the book. I really wanted to read it because it was the winner of the National Book Award. At this time last year, there was an outside chance that it could have won the Pulitzer. So I did get around to reading it. Didn't love it. Wasn't sure I really liked it. I don't have a copy of it because unlike Edinburgh, I actually gave this copy away and that's why I don't have it right now. So did read it, but it was an unhaul. The next one was a sort of unusual title to include in a book haul for me because it's an ebook. I purchased an ebook in April of 2021 because there was a sale on Let's Get Back to the Party by Zach Sala, which was one of my most anticipated reads of 2021 along with Liberty by Caitlin Greenidge. And I purchased it 
even though I don't typically read ebooks anymore, and I got, again, I got it through Barnes and Noble, and then it became available on audio a little bit later, and I started it, and I really wasn't liking it, so I stopped reading it. I think I wasn't even a quarter of the way in, and never revisited it. So because it's an ebook, it doesn't count as an unhaul. It's just going to live in the digital realm forever, but I don't actually have a copy of it taking up my space. And if I had purchased a copy of it for my bookshelf, it would be gone because I really did not like the beginning of this book. And everything I've heard from people who have commented about the book in the years since have really just reinforced the idea that it was ultimately not anything that I was going to like. So we'll leave it at that. The next one is another book that Sean the Book Maniac had sent me, Get in Trouble, Stories by Kelly Link. Of the books that Sean sent me, this is probably the one I'm least likely to get to at some point. So if it's still here at this point next year, I will probably be thinking about getting rid of it myself. I know he didn't get along with this story collection, so he didn't finish it. And uh, I've heard good things about it. I've heard a bit of mixed things, though. So I won't feel too bad if in a year I haven't gotten to it and I start thinking about removing it. But I am still interested enough that I'll keep it, I'll hold on to it, and if I get to it in the next year, that'll be great. I don't have any emphasis on it, so it's very unlikely that I will. Another one that Sean sent me was Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. Haven't gotten around to it. There is a movie coming, so it's very possible that I will. I've heard good things about the book. I know there's also a bit of a mystery around Delia Owens and a crime that was committed and her, she, her husband, and I believe her stepson were involved in, in Africa. Um, don't want to get into all that right now, but it does sound like an interesting book, maybe especially with the context of all of that. I, I would still like to get to it at some point, and especially with the movie coming out on the horizon. The final book that Sean the Book Maniac sent me was Cousin Bet by Honoré de Balzac, and I don't know when I will ever get to this, but this is definitely a library builder for me because I've never read Honoré de Balzac and I know he's, say, Brian at Bookish's favorite author. So is he somebody I would like to get to at some point? I'm totally fine having him on my shelf just in case inspiration ever strikes, but I don't have any immediate plans to get to this book. So that is the 2021 book haul revisited. There were eight books and I read two and a half. I'm being a little generous with that half because as I said, I don't even think I made it a quarter into Let's Get Back to the Party by Zach Sala. But I did attempt it and give up. So my channel, my rules, I'm calling it a half. And the other two that I read were Edinburgh. Unfortunately, it's lying on the floor right now and Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu. Unhauls two in progress, including the one that's on the floor and the one that was already gifted to someone else. So that's what we're looking at in terms of 2021. Let's get to the 2020 book haul, which is pretty sizable. That was pretty early in the pandemic, and I decided to put in an order within a local independent bookstore to try to support them during the pandemic, hence why I got a lot of these titles. The next one that I hauled in April of 2020 was A Woman of No Importance, The Untold Story of the American Spy Who Helped Win World War II by Sonia Purnell. This was something I was assigned to read for the BookTube Prize back in 2020. I was doing nonfiction, obviously. And most of the books were available from my library, but this one wasn't. So I ordered it, got it, and I really enjoyed this book a lot. If you haven't read it, I would say definitely check it out. And I'm totally fine keeping it on my shelf because I did like it. And I don't think I'd ever revisit it, but it was a good enough story. I really, this was the last book that I read for the Book Two Prize that year. And it kind of waited until the last minute because I just needed to wrap up all of the other books. So I was a little nervous that I didn't have a lot of time, and I tore through this book really quickly. I liked it. Definitely something I will be happy to keep around on my shelf for the time being at least. The next one, I think, jumped onto my radar because of the International Booker Prize, but I can't say for sure. It's The Enlightenment of the Green Gauge Tree by Shukufe Azar. It was shortlisted for the Stella Prize. Maybe that's actually what did it. And it is translated from the Persian, so maybe it was the International Booker. I can't remember. This book seemed to be everywhere in April or May of 2020. 
And I was really interested in reading it. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. Uh, it is a Europa edition, and I haven't gotten around to reading it. I still would really like to, but the urgency has died down a little bit. I, I want to keep it on my shelf because I'd love to get to it at some point. I've heard really good things about it, but uh, we'll see when that eventually happens. The next one was Gachar Gochar by Vivek Shanbag, a tiny little slip of a novel. You could dunk it in your coffee. It's that tiny. I did end up reading this. I managed to fit it in. I can't remember if it was last year or the, if I did manage to read it in 2020. It was good. I enjoyed it. I don't think I would say I loved it, but I liked it enough that I'm totally fine letting it continue to inhabit real estate on my shelf. And it is something I could potentially revisit at some point. Again, it's only tiny, so it's not like it takes up a lot of real estate anyway. And it was a really interesting book and I did enjoy it. So I read it and I'm happy continuing to have it on my shelf. And then there are two volumes of My Brother's Husband by Gengoro Tagame. I had originally only ordered one because I was going to try it. That was the year of my infamous Read Outside Your Comfort Zone challenge where I wanted to... I, the problem with that challenge, the reason I call it infamous, is that I made the challenge too big. There were too many parts of it. I wanted to read a whole bunch of different genres that I don't traditionally read. I wanted to read authors from different countries that I don't traditionally read from. And it got overwhelming by the end of the year. I don't typically read manga, and this was my experiment with that. So originally, I only ordered volume one, and then I read it in about an hour and automatically wanted volume two. But also, there's... I didn't realize this. It kind of ends and immediately wants to flow into volume two, and I didn't know that, so I had only ordered volume one and then immediately had to have volume two and had to wait about a week for it to come in from an order, and loved these. These were among my favorite books of 2020. Really worth it. If you haven't read these, I would say please, 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 please check them out. It's a really great story. Joel also read them and loved them, so I'm very happy having them on my shelf and letting them take up space in my library because I see them on my shelf a lot and I think about the story and I, it makes me happy. The next one is something I haven't gotten to yet. It is The Man Who Loved Children by Christina Stead. For whatever reason, at that point in 2020, the only copy that bookstore could find was this hardcover edition, which was actually only about $2 more than the paperback. So I went with it. And here it is. I've heard really great things about this book. I would love to read it. I guess you could classify this as a sort of library builder because I didn't have any immediate intentions to get to it, and I don't have any immediate intentions to get to it now, but I do definitely still want to read it. Like I said, I've heard a lot of really great things about this book, and if you think I should put an emphasis on this to try to get to it faster, let me know in the comment section down below. The next one was another success story. The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I picked this because I thought I just wanted something quick and easy, and I ended up getting to it almost immediately. Traditionally, I turn to mystery thrillers when I want something quick and easy, almost like a palate cleanser before starting another book, but that hasn't been the case a lot of the time recently. So I keep accumulating mystery thrillers over the years, and then they end up sitting on my shelf, and I don't end up doing anything with them. But this one I did manage to read fairly quickly, and I enjoyed it. It's Described as a sort of Agatha Christie story, and it kind of is. There are a little bit of parallels to And Then There Were None, but not really. They don't hold up. But it's still a fun story, and it's different enough from traditional mystery thrillers that I found it very enjoyable to read. It was that perfect mix of you know what you're going to get, but it's different enough that you don't feel claustrophobic or like this is something that you have read a million times over so I enjoyed this I would try another book by Lucy Foley I know she has a couple of other ones but I have not at this point but this was a fun one and because of that I'm fine at letting it keep up space on my shelf but if I end up needing a lot of space in this area of the alphabet I could potentially end up getting rid of it but I enjoyed it enough that it's perfectly fine sticking around and the final book from my April of 2020 book haul is Valentine by Elizabeth Wetmore. I am going to hold on to this book because I've heard some really good things about it. And that makes me feel like I should get around to it at some point. But the urgency has really died down over time. And with everything else on my plate right now, I do wonder if I will ever get to this book. And if this is something I'd be more likely to listen to on audio. 
So I'm going to hold on to this, but if it's still here in April of 2023, it's a prime candidate for an unhaul at that point. The story is also sort of difficult. And again, I'm not going to get into the plot in this video, but if you want to know what it is, check out the original book haul in the description box down below. So it sounds like it's difficult. And, you know, in the early pandemic, there was always the idea that things would improve at some point, And it feels like things have just gotten more stressful over time. So that's another thing that maybe has made me hold this book at arm's length, so to speak. But uh, we'll see what happens. I'm going to hold on to it for at least another year and we will see about that. So there were nine books that I hauled in April of 2020 and I read six of them. So that's a pretty good result. And right now there are no unhauls. Again, Valentine is a candidate if it's still here next year. If I end up needing space in the Fs in the alphabet, I could potentially get rid of the guest list, but I'm perfectly fine keeping all of those books. So even though there are nine of them, I did a pretty good job picking things that I know I'm going to be interested in, in over time. And the fact that I read so many of them shows that they were things that I really wanted to get to. So that was actually a good month. And now let's jump to the final month for this book haul revisit. What's really interesting is that now April of 2019 is going to be basically the opposite of April 2020. Let's get into it. The first book that I hauled is actually not part of that narrative. It's The Accidental Tourist by Anne Tyler. Anne Tyler won a Pulitzer Prize for Breathing Lessons. I read that book when I was about 20 years old and hated it. Absolutely hated it. I do want to revisit it as part of my Pulitzer Prize project, in which I'm trying to read every book that won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction. But alongside that, I do hear really good things about other books by Anne Tyler. One of them is The Accidental Tourist. The one that I really hear good things about is Dinner at the Homesick Restaurant. All of those came out in the 80s. So to me... Dinner at the Homesick Restaurant, The Accidental Tourist, and Breathing Lessons form their own sort of trifecta of Ann Tyler winning the Pulitzer Prize. So as part of me going back and rereading Breathing Lessons, I would also like to read those other two books. This was at my library available for sale. I think hardcovers are either a dollar or two dollars. I can't remember because it's been a really long time since I purchased a book from my library. At most, this book cost me $2, and it's in pretty good condition. And I am totally fine holding on to it because it is something I want to get to, not just because of my Pulitzer Prize project, but because I have heard good things about it. I've never seen the movie that was made from this book, but maybe that'll be part of that Ann Tyler journey once I get around to that. So this one had a very specific purpose, and I am totally fine keeping it and seeing what happens with that. The next one is actually not part of the narrative that we're going to start getting. Actually, to be fair, the next one isn't either. So the first three books from April of 2019 are good book purchases. I want to make that very clear. Then they start getting a little bit questionable. So another one of the good ones is A Pale View of Hills by Kazuo Ishiguro. In 2019, I did the Choose the Year book tag. I chose the year I was born. And A Pale View of Hills was published that year. I had not known what it's about. And when I found out, I was really interested. I had, at that time, only read two books by Kazuo Ishiguro. I had read Never Let Me Go, which I love, and The Remains of the Day, which I also love. I ended up not liking Clara and the Sun, which was released last year, and I did read. But that this was purchased long before that. So I really want to read this as well. I haven't gotten to it yet, but absolutely, this is something that I will keep and eventually get to on my shelf. And the next one is still a good purchase. It is City Boy, My Life in New York during the 1960s and 70s by Edmund White. Edmund White is a legendary LGBTQ writer. I have not gotten around to reading him yet. I do feel like at this point, I purchased a copy of a novel of his, and I'm more likely to read that first. I really wanted to read this but I ended up reading Dancer from the Dance instead, which is set in New York in the 1970s. So I wanted to give myself a little bit more time before dipping back into that time period. And I feel like if I was going to do that time period again, I might actually pick up the novel City of Night by John Rishi instead. There are other books by Edmund White I would probably get to first, but I am still really interested in this book, especially since it is nonfiction set in the era that those two novels I mentioned are uh, set in. So I would really like to get to it at some point. This is kind of like a library builder, something I would like to get to at some point. So the first three books from my April of 2019 book haul are good book purchases. Now's where we start getting a little bit dicier. The first one is Attic by Catherine Dunn. 
I read Geek Love somewhere in the early 2000s and absolutely loved it. If you had asked me somewhere circa like 2003, I probably would have told you that that was my favorite book of all time. Now, looking back, I feel like I should reread that book because there are there are a lot of things about it that in hindsight seem like they either shouldn't work or they could be really problematic. And maybe at that point in time, at that age, I just didn't notice. But I also didn't realize that anything else by Catherine Dunn had been published. And here is this. So I saw it on a shelf and immediately purchased it. And then I got home and started looking into it and saw a lot of negative reviews of this. Apparently it is told in a sort of stream of consciousness style, which to be fair, it does say on the back of the book. But because it's so small in the store, I was like, oh, that could be fun. But then I started seeing reviews where people hate the way this story is told. So that really put me, made me put a pause on this. They are actually publishing a, an, another novel by Catherine Dunn this year. I don't quite know how I feel about that yet. I have to look into it a little more before I really decide, because she, because she has died several years ago. So I don't want to get into that whole like Harper Lee goes at a Watchmen thing where I, I feel because of the way in which it was published, I have a really distaste for that book and I will, don't think I will ever read it. I need to figure out if it's the same sort of situation. I'm not saying it is, but I need to research and figure it out before that book is published. Anyway, so even though it's a really tiny book, I've heard a lot of bad things about this. If you've read Attic, I would love to know what you think of it because I am really thinking that maybe this is something even as small as it is that I don't need to spend any time on. So let me know if you've read it. But to me, it seems like a prime candidate for an unhaul at this point because I just don't know that I'll ever get to it based on the negative things that I have heard about it since I spontaneously purchased it. The other one was another spontaneous purchase because someone on BookTube mentioned it. It's Willa and Hesper by Amy Feltman. And it sounded really interesting at the time. And here's the thing. I keep forgetting about this book. I just don't even remember that it exists. Somehow even the spine just kind of blurs into the shelf and I don't even see it. And then occasionally when I'm going through and making room, I'm like, what is this book? And I pull it off the shelf and I look at it. And it always takes me a second to think, oh, somebody on BookTube talked about this. And I don't even remember who talked about it on BookTube. Maybe if I watched the original book haul, I would remember. For all of that... I feel like maybe this is something I don't need to hold on to. And a couple of months ago, I actually pulled it off my shelf and put it down on the desk thinking I'm going to revisit this. And somehow it got moved. And again, I completely forgot about it. And then when I was reorganizing some stuff, it fell out of something. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> so if you've read Willa and Hesper by Amy Feltman, let me know if it's worth holding on to. But right now, I'm thinking this is something I'm going to yank from the library just because of that. And I'm not trying to be mean to the book. It's just for whatever reason, I keep forgetting that this exists. And because of that, I'm probably really unlikely to ever get to it. So, unhaul. That's what I'm saying right now. But if you want to change my mind, leave a comment and show your work in the comment section down below. Two more books. One of them is The Gallery by John Horne Burns. Earlier in 2019, I had hauled, um, I forget the name of it, but a book by John Castellano that is about Tennessee Williams. And there's a character in there who is John Horne Burns, and he has written a book called The Gallery. As I was reading it, I found out that that was a real person and it was a real book. And I looked into it, and it is, it is described as a forgotten gay classic. So I immediately ordered it. It's published by New York Review of Books. And I... Think of this as a library builder. I don't know when I will ever get to it, but it sounds fascinating. And I unhauled that book by Castellano. And this one is still here and I will hold on to it until I get to it because Forgotten Gay Classic. That's right up my alley. I love that stuff. The next one is Karamo, My Story of Embracing Purpose, Healing, and Hope by Karamo Brown from Netflix's Queer Eye Reboot. Yeah, I got it. I don't care what you think. And I read it and I liked it. It was fine. But also, I don't think it needs to take up space on my shelf. So this is actually something that has been sitting in my unhaul pile. Not that I didn't like the book. It's totally fine. But I also don't think I need to hold on to it and let it take up space that could be given to other things. So it's an unhaul. But I did read it and I did like it. So of the seven books that I purchased in 2019, I only read one of them. And that was Karamo. And I'm looking at an unhaul of two. 
Karamo and, um, see, I've already forgotten the name of it. Willa and Hesper. I had to look it up on the list. So those two are unhauls at the moment. There are some other candidates such as Attic by Catherine Dunn, and um, we'll see what happens with that. So I did not do the math for an overall. Let me try to do that quickly. So I quickly did some math. Of the 24 books that I have hauled in the last three Aprils, I have read nine and a half. And again, that half is being a little bit generous, but my channel, my rules. So that's not really great in terms of reading results, but there are a lot of things that are library builders, like things that I'll be happy to have on my shelf so I can pick and choose when I would like to get to them. And unhauls, there have only been four, but there are a lot of other candidates for them. So if you have feedback on any of these titles, I'd love to hear them. And as always, I really appreciate your time. I'm going to leave it at that for today, and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.